125 millimeter Minotaur into this. Starting out with an all over base coat on the flesh with Mornfang Brown. As the second layer on the flesh, I'm using orange brown, and I'm covering about two thirds of the raised muscles, leaving the Mornfang brown in the lower one third. If you like what you're seeing, you can subscribe to the channel by clicking that little beholder in the bottom right hand corner of your screen. Thank you. Now with a 50-50 mix of orange brown and ochre brown, I'll be going over the upper two thirds of the second layer of the muscles. Now to unify those transitions, I'll be using an orange brown glaze. Using the same mix for layer three as a dry brush on his back. And as a max highlight on his flesh, I'm going to be using pure ochre brown. I like the yellowish tint that it has to it, and I'll be applying this to the upper third of layer three from what I used before. And I'm gonna go in as well on all the other pieces of the flesh, such as the two arms, the torso and face. And I'll be doing the same exact technique and the same exact strategy on those pieces. Now to the cloth he's wearing over his waist, I'm gonna start off with a 50-50 mix of heavy warm gray and heavy brown. Base coating the skulls in heavy brown. For the second layer on the skulls, I'll be using a 50-50 mix of heavy brown and bone white. And with pure bone white, I'll be going over the frontmost facing ridges of the skulls. Looking to add some weathered tones to these skulls with some yellow ink. So I'll be stippling some yellow ink over um, each individual skull here to produce the effect of aging. Now for the second layer on the cloth, I'll be using a pure warm gray. And I'll be focusing mostly on the edges and folds. Turning now to the bones that he is wearing on his person, I'll be base coating these in heavy brown as well. And there's a lot of them, so this is gonna be a fairly tedious process. Highlighting those in bone white. And once those highlights are dry, I'll be unifying those transitions with an ochre brown glaze. Using a 50-50 mix of wood grain and orange brown, I'm going to be providing a base coat to the leather straps that the Minotaur is wearing around his lower leg.
and also providing a base coat to the ropes that are fastening the skulls to his waist. With pure orange brown, I'll be providing the first highlights to the leather. And with dark sand, I'll be applying a max highlight. And finishing with a light wash of wood grain to zip those all up. Now bear in mind, I'm completing the same exact steps on every limb, on the leather, bones, and flesh. Using that same dark sand to provide an edge highlight to the cloths. And to try and conserve what I have in the palette, I'm also going to use dark sand as a base coat on his hooves. Following that up with a layer of sepia ink. Moving back up to the upper body, I'm going to be using ochre brown to provide the iris of his eyes. Now that the ink is dry, I'll be using dark sand to provide some edge highlights on the hoof. Moving on to his ram skull pauldron, I'll be base coating that in heavy brown, horns, and face. Once that's dry, I'll be using a CPO wash on the face. And a black wash on the horns to create some delineation. And pretty much continuing the same leather process that I used on the leg, on the strap that he is wearing across his chest as well.
Beginning to highlight the ram horns with dark sand, following the grooves that are already uh, indicated on the figure. And dulling that down with another layer of black wash. Edge highlighting with dark sand. And a final layer of black wash on the lower bend of the curve to emphasize those highlights. And back to the leather. Base coating the rope in heavy brown. A mix of heavy charcoal and heavy warm gray as a highlight on his snout. And moving to the pure heavy warm gray for a max highlight. And since I want him to have black hair, I'm going to be using that same heavy warm gray as a highlight on the strands of his hair. Dark sand is a highlight on the rope. Overbrush of heavy blue gray on the fur lining the leather. Moving into the metallic, uh, we'll call it a belt buckle. I'm starting off with a layer of turquoise. Edge highlighting with some heavy blue gray. Now overbrushing with a thin diluted layer of heavy blue gray. I want the gray to kind of come through and I also want the turquoise to be present underneath it to kind of give that impression of reflective steel. Now with a 50-50 mix of heavy blue gray and dead white, I'll be reapplying that edge highlight to the belt buckle.
Now in the creases of this figure, I'll be applying Null Oil as a shade. Some heavy brown on the skull beneath it. Fifty fifty mix of heavy brown and bone white. And since the axe handle is made out of a much longer and sturdier bone, I'm going to be providing a different base coat. So I'm using a fifty fifty mix of heavy gray and goblin green. Adding a little dark sand to that mixture to brighten it up, I'll be providing the first highlights along the curves of the bone. Now applying a sepia shade in the recesses of the bone. Putting things on the axe blade with a base coat of heavy brown and heavy gray. And I chose this color because I want the bottom part of the axe blade to appear as if it's kind of reflecting the earth below. Applying wood grain at the base of the center ridge to kind of give the impression of rusting. Adding dark sand to the base coat, I'll be applying some highlights towards the lower third of the blade, specifically at the edge. On the upper portion of the axe blade, I will be using a base coat of heavy blue-gray because I want it to appear as though it is reflecting a little bit of the sky. Adding some tones with some more wood grain to the lower portion of the axe blade. Now some pure bone white, I'm going to really try to make the edge of this axe seem sharp. Very diluted so that it's smooth. And then go up with some heavy blue gray and dead white mixture to provide edge highlighting to the upper portion of the axe here. I'm going to go with an overbrush of heavy gray and dry sand right over the fur of the axe haft. And finally finish up with some highlights of orange-brown on the leather straps. Using that same 50-50 mix of heavy gray and goblin green, I'll be applying a base coat to his vanquished skull that he's holding up in his left hand. And with some pure goblin green, I'll be applying the first highlight to the skull's face. Some heavy gray for the tongue. 